Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com here with the second part of the sixth week of this podcast. This hand is again from a $10,000 buy-in tournament that I played at Bellagio. Um, the, the names of these players are all incorrect, except for Kid, who is a young kid, and J Card Shark, who is me. Uh, today we're looking at the hand from our opponent's perspective. And in this hand, he actually did not call down, so I have no clue what he actually had. However, for the sake of the video, we're going to go through here and assume he has two random cards and see what, what he should be doing. It's very important to note that the players to my left, about three or four of them, have been playing very tight so far, so raising here from the kid spot with any two cards is probably going to be a pretty good play when we're all very deep stacked. And I, I J Card Shark, had yet to have been three betting, so he really has no reason not to raise any two cards. Here I raise, he raises, I three bet, and he likes to call. I, you see I have three two here, but I have no clue what he has. You have to pretend that he has something else. I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss what I think his range is. So he likes to check. J Card Shark bets, and he check raises. And this is sort of a thought experiment you can do, is you can always put yourself in your opponent's shoes and try to figure out what they would do this play with. And it's a pretty interesting spot, because in this spot I think our opponent will certainly check raise with the nuts, like 10-8, or jack-9, 9-7, pocket jacks, pocket nines, pocket sevens, any of those hands. Uh, quite possibly king-queen, queen-10, queen maybe bluffs like pocket fives, pocket fours, pocket threes. Those are pretty good hands to turn into bluffs because occasionally you do just peel your nut card and stack your opponent. But right here, it's pretty tough to know what he has. And whenever J Card Shark calls, this kid has to assume J Card Shark has at least something like 9-8. I wonder if anyone was expecting me to say something like pocket queens there. Um, J Card Shark's going to show up with like at least a pair plus a gut shot. And you know, all the way up to the nuts. If I had if I had pocket jacks here or ten eight, I would call every time in J Card Shark's spot. I'm never re raising here. On the turn the kid surprises me in checks. And I think the ace is actually a pretty good bluff card because if J Card Shark's sitting over here with something like Pocket Queens, that ace is just terrible because the kid could certainly check raise with maybe a hand like Ace Jack. I don't think I would check raise with Ace Jack on this board, but this kid certainly could, because he was young and aggressive, and they tend to overvalue hands like top pair, bad kicker. Anyways, the kid checks, and J Card Shark checks behind. When he checks, he's either totally giving up with a stone bluff, or he has a hand like King Jack or Jack 10 that he simply wants to try to get closer to showdown with now, and is you know unhappy with. When J Card Shark checks, I should expect the kid to bet the river a lot of the time because J Card Shark looks pretty weak now, like he has pocket queens. And if a guy has pocket queens on this board, you should basically always try to barrel him off of it. This 10 is a great card to represent for the kid, so it makes me think when the kid checks that the kid must have something like a hand with value, like maybe Queen Jack or maybe something like Queen 9. I guess that would make a lot of sense. And whenever you're sitting here in J Card Shark's spot, you don't need to be thinking about just your own hand. You need to be thinking about what this kid could possibly have. And the more I sit here and think about it, seeing that he did not bluff the turn or the river, and he didn't value bet, he either has something like pocket four to just decided to totally give up with, which is absurd on this river. Anytime you have an eight here, anytime you can represent a one card straight as a guy that just calls a three bet preflop, you could certainly have an eight in your range especially when you check raise the flop. So an 8 should certainly be in kid's range. And also, so could an ace, and so could two pair like jack-10. So right here, I think J Card Shark's range looks a lot like um, pocket queens, pocket kings, maybe something like queen-jack, jack-10, king-jack, ace-jack. And kid's range looks a lot like two pair or stone air. So right here, I really think the kid should make a bet, something like 35000 And when he does not bet, it makes me think he has a hand that he thinks has some showdown value. And now, if he's sitting here with Queen-9, Queen-9 actually has very little showdown value in this spot, because, I mean, J Card Shark has at least something like a pair of 10s. Because if I had Queen-10, notice I have a pair of 10s now, and that's like the very bottom of what I could have. If I had... Um, 
something like h6, and now I have a straight, so... Right here, queen on has no show no value. So maybe something like king jack, that would make sense, because that does beat queen 10, but not not by much. But I guess in reality here, I'm, what I'm saying is this kid should bluff this river virtually every time, and when he fails to, it just boggles my mind as to what he has, and unfortunately, I will never know. So check back next week for another hand where the kid raises, and I play another very large pot with him in this $10,000 buy-in tournament at Bellagio. I think it's a pretty exciting hand and a lot of fun to review. If you guys have any questions or comments or would like me to review one of your hands, please feel free to send them in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.